Hold on, can we? Oh, right. Yeah, we should probably call the meeting to order and do all that first. <laughs> Um, all right, we'll call this meeting to order. This is a meeting of the CIP committee and it is Wednesday, uh, February 9th at 6.30 p.m. And the first item on our agenda is, um, I don't have it in front of me. <laughs> so what is it? Um, present to speak. Present to speak. Is anyone here present to speak? I don't see anyone. Okay, so we can move on. I think the next thing is approval of minutes. Is that right? I move we approve the minutes of February. No, I'm sorry. Jan was it January 26th? Um, yes. I'll second. Any discussion about the minutes of January 26th? I think they're pretty complete and mm -hmm. captured some, you know, we had quite a bit of discussion last time. Yeah. Yes, Kelsey does a great job. Thank you, Kelsey. <laughs> uh, all right, so we have a motion and a second and it doesn't seem like anybody has any corrections. So all in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Any, Aye. Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Probably me. <laughs> Okay, yes, Jen wasn't, you weren't on the committee yet. I was not there. <laughs> so, okay. Um, all right. Um, so the Donna, minute. Mm -hmm. Hold on. I, I'm sorry. I was having trouble getting in, going directly through the, the link. It kept telling me the meeting didn't exist. Um, I, I would just like to point out that Karen Ann is one name, Kelsey, if you type it up the next time. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say. Uh, okay. <laughs> But the A is capitalized, right? The A is capitalized, yes. I don't see Kelsey. I thought she was here. She's here. She is. She's there. She's there. Okay. What's our next? Uh, the plan discussion. The plan, plan discussion. All right. And this is the part where Donna gets to dazzle us all with her screen share. <laughs> Donna, you should be good to screen share. Yes, I am. Do we have um, uh, do we have other color choices, or is there like a limited number? The only reason I'm asking is the ARPA ones. It's hard to read that that black type on dark green. A little bit. If we could make that a different color or something, unless we've already turned in the color key. <laughs> I agree. With, I agree with Steph. I was struggling with that this afternoon. All right, I'll work on that. There's something slightly lighter. Yeah, I'll I'll see what I can what I can find. Does that seem like an improvement? Yeah. Yeah. It does. Ooh, it's more Irish looking. <laughs> speaks to me well Donna's um, doing that can I add I think it was Melissa that asked the question last week and I think it was this meeting <laughs> um, we've done on many whether or not um, ARPA could use if something could be paid out of both um, partial out of ARPA and <clears throat> after speaking with um, Mike Musinski at uh, CCM today. Um, he uh, concludes that they don't think he can't find anything that says we can't. So we could um, fund a larger project from multiple sources. You just have to note um, which of the uses and make sure that it qualifies for a use under ARPA. So for instance, I think we were talking about the public works vehicles at that time. 
and that yes, if we wanted to pay a hundred thousand out of ARPA and a hundred twenty five thousand dollars out of CIP, we would just need to note it was revenue loss used for ARPA. Thank you for getting that okay. answer. You're welcome. And and just just to let you guys know, the ARPA Commission did not um, vote or to to do any sort of approval or, um, you know, uh, uh, what was the word I was thinking of? Like a, uh, just like a preliminary kind of approval. Um, they didn't, they, they just weren't ready yet to do that. So it wasn't a no, it was just a not sure, like <laughs> where, how to do it. So I, I I would say for the time being, it makes sense to leave these in here like this. Um, Cause there will be, you know, as the weeks go on here through the budget season, there probably will be more tweaks to this. Even after we turn it over to the selectmen, there can be tweaks to this. So um, I just wanna let you guys know that was the, the update. It's kind of understandable, isn't it? If, uh, if you guys are setting up, boilerplate process for how you weigh and approve ARPA projects. It's sort of rushing them before that process is set. Right. So I understand why they would be hesitant. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see there. Um, what, what the commission did decide to do is to create a, a form where people can apply for their, for their projects. And um, we'll see what we've got because there's quite a few informal and formal um, discussions about things that are being, um, that are gonna be asked for. So uh, we'll probably at the next meeting, which is on the 26th, is that right? Of February, um, there, there should be some actual, you know, requests that are formal requests and they'll know the, the full universe of like what types of things at least are going to be asked for. So um, on the 28th, it's 1.30 on February 28th. So for now, I think we should leave it in like this. Um, and I should also tell you, I spoke with um, Alan Humphreys from Parks and Rec and He's thinking that they might want to change their CIP submission, um, but more of an ARPA submission. So that in first in the first year they might not want to do the pavilion, but would might want to do the lights. But um, I said, you know, we can't deal with it until we have something formal, and he can't deal with it until his board meets um, and they know for sure what they want to do and where they want to ask it from and all that. So um, that's just, none of that would affect our, our bottom line local number right now. So it's okay. So like they're thinking of swapping out an ARPA project for an ARPA project. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, and from year one to, your five swapping them. <laughs> okay, so it would but go your five out, one is more money. So yeah, and but it's lights, lights on, it's lights on the track. Um, oh, that's why. So this is like to to walk after dark kind of thing. Or yeah. Dust, yeah. 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 So so we'll see. So anyway, Donna, were you able to? check all of the can uh, i just ask a quick question before we go to something else mm -hmm. um this maybe is just like a housekeeping thing but if if we think that something is appropriate for arpa does it then come off capital and go back to the department that it came from or do we submit it as capital and then um, are responsible for it if it's not arpa yeah well, i I think that the groups need to ask for it themselves, but like I, so what I did was I just sent the ARPA commission the actual CIP submission just so that they would have something to read and understand about the project um, because we didn't have a form at the time and we still don't, but we're getting closer. Um, so, um, 
yeah, now, now I think that they, each of these groups, I think that's going to be the next communication back is, is to, to send it in because there are things that like, we, we can't take responsibility for it. it okay. Yeah. But that's a good question. <laughs> um, so I think Donna, were you able to uh, work out all of the fun source tables and see that all the math works? Yes. Yes. And what you see is in year three, the reserve fund is running into the negative. And mm -hmm. if you look at the plan in year three, that's largely due to $900,000 for Liska Road that we have coded to the reserve mm -hmm. right here. Do you have any other large projects in, well, I should say that <clears throat> in year three? One, two. None of those other road projects have come up or Okay, so I'm just thinking orange, if there were things you want to look together. Yep, yep. The orange <laughs> is the, the public works projects. And that's the only one in year three. So do I see the same project out in year five? For seven hundred and fifty thousand, yes. So it's nine hundred, and then two years later is seven. So, so we have it two places to plan. One point five, isn't it? It's more I, than nine hundred grand, right? I think nine hundred was the cost doing it to last year. We won't know until we do the engineering to get a better sense of the cost. But I think it's just in here twice. I think oh. one is one maybe 750 was the original ask prior to this year. Uh -huh. And we had worked it into a bond with some other road projects. I see Mike shaking oh, his I head. If, if I recall, that's what I, we did last I year. I think it's vague, but I believe that is the case. 750 okay. is now erroneous. Yeah, so that's so Donna, you can delete that 750. That's nice. We had that charged to a different place, the 750, right? We were looking at bonding some things together. So can I make a suggestion? In year two, we have the bond anticipation note on a firehouse addition at 2.9 million, the school at 18 million. Would it make sense to put our road in that same bond if we're going to do a big bond or do a separate bond the next year? I mean, I just don't know how else we pay for 900, you know, a million dollar road. Right. And then where does the village hill I'm sorry, the Schoolfield Road. Right, because Village uh, and, really isn't in there except for preliminary. Well, it, right, that 360 is such an obscure number um, that I think we'd be better either leaving it there and bonding it or moving it out to year three with the uh, um, Liska Road and bond those big road projects together. What impact though would you know a big road bond to have uh, at the same time we might be launching the early financing of a renovation or a new school? I, I think financially there's a, a big hit either way, but we can't if we move forward with a school project, we can't neglect our roads for the next 20 to 30 years until we do that. So um and after the weather we had this summer, I really worry about pushing off the Liska Road culvert project too far. That is a, a one way in, one way out road as it currently sits. 
Yeah, I'm not sure how to pay for all of this yet, but I would agree we can't keep <laughs> on these road projects. Um, just a, a good example, and Erica knows this, last night I was on Village Hill Road and the majority of the roads in Willington and certainly the state roads were clear and dry um, with little icy spots here and there, but Village Hill, because the drainage is so bad from the north side of Pinecrest all the way down to Roaring Brook was black ice. And so I called Erica to have the, you know, about to let the road crew know in case they were not already out. Um, and uh, that problem is most likely just a problem of bad drainage. Some of it you'll never get rid of in the winter. You're going to have melting snow piles, but this is a unique problem there. So how do we balance out? We have to find a way to pay for these things because if we knowingly spend decades delaying a drainage that's causing ice sooner or later, someone's going to pay for that mm -hmm. uh, way we don't want to. Mm -hmm. The other so, part of that drainage is it's going through people's yards that where it does finally fall off the road. It's going down the mm -hmm. guy's driveway beside his house and out back. And yeah. he certainly justifiably complained for many years about that i mean if we're if if part of our job is to weigh priorities and and order of things to me the those roads have been in the queue a lot longer and have a lot more safety elements to them than doing the you know willington one um addition in in short order because that's three million and you know I just think the roads, like you say, I mean, it, it's it's just not gonna it's not gonna go away. And the, and I feel like those are some of the most populated neighborhoods in town, and they've just been dealing with it and rolling their eyes for decades. You know, it's it's just we got to do something. I agree, Steph, and at least um, in my time at CIP here, we've been talking every year about how we have to do it, we have to do it, we have to do it. And we finished this four, you know, five-year plan, moving it into year five, and still haven't made any progress. At some point, someone has to, you know, put a solid plan in place. But it's, I'm with Mike. How do you know where do we pay for it? There may be some things in the work that may increase revenues in town. That would be a hope. Um, that would, you know, help our financial picture. But that doesn't exist right now, so we have to. I don't know how we don't bond some of these at some point. But at the same time, look for um, if any of these federal dollars, um, these roads will qualify there. I don't know if they do, but it's worth investigating. Is there a is there a process for? getting that ball rolling because I guess I'm just worried about this little perfect storm of all these mega things coming together school roads and you know other yeah. things they're starting to roll out um the federal dollars and how they become accessible so they just started talking about what the plan will look like so it's a slow roll but <clears throat> yeah you know it's continuously you know paying attention to the grants that come up and seeing if we qualify and put our hat in the ring the lot zip grants that come up, these roads are off um, the qualifying roads um, to, to utilize those ones because we did try that when the last lot zip grant came up. So that's a down. Is, something, is this something that we can task our state folks with, senators and people like that, to try and figure out whether there's money available somewhere else for that stuff? I say yes. Yeah. You mean federal money, Jen? Or, or state, state or, or state. I don't know. <laughs> Something I'm just, I'm, just I'm thinking about which players do we go to. So yeah. That's well, yeah, my <laughs> my scope is very small, but I, I what harm could it do to go to everybody? Like start small and then work our way up, I guess. Yeah. Well, as far as Liska Road goes, we're doing the right thing by putting the money in this year to get the the engineering done so at least we'll know the exact number and uh so so i think i agree with erica if we add it to the bond 
for next year, it's it's going to be a you know a good placeholder, I guess. Um. So, Christina, I've got a procedural question. Mm -hmm. um, I know that we typically, you know, we approve essentially a package. We have a lot of discussion about different items. Some items receive very little discussion. Um, they move right through. And then um, I think basically things are approved at least somewhat similar to how people have applied for them on their um, request document. Occasionally we issue some instructions, but do we have a clear path? And maybe Stuart can help answer this uh, having been chair for so long. Um, do we issue really specific instructions sometimes? Like I know sometimes we cut a project or we add to a project, um, but how do we make sure that if, if this committee has a certain intent that that message is conveyed to the end department. And that way, when the townspeople approve it, there's a clear understanding. And then the end user is a clear understanding. Um, I, is that, I don't know, something you or Stuart might be able to help answer? Um, I'll give it a try. I, I, I don't know that there's like a formal process of where, are you saying like that where we would send like, directions like this is how you get you get the funds <laughs> or um well as far as well i don't know if Stuart, do you understand? so hi historically we're an advisory committee to the selectmen and um our job has been pretty much limited to the dollar amounts that are being requested um uh, once in a while we'll ask somebody if they could you know uh, put up with half of it. I think going back to the uh, the exercise stations at River Road Park, they went came in with say twenty thousand, and they ended up with ten kind of thing. And they said they could do just fewer stations, but still do it. Um, so there there is a little bit of give and take there. Um, yeah. Somebody should probably be overseeing the, you know, are you buying what you told us you were going to buy, and you know, what are you buying, kind of thing. But as CIP committee uh, i'm not sure that's our place to do it um, in theory the town is doing the purchasing of these items um and that would be the time to you know control the funds of what are you buying and you know was your estimate correct is you know did you ask for a lot more money than you needed or you don't have enough um it has to come up in there somewhere as well well i have a related question to that is that okay christina yeah, yeah. Can um, I just? Oh yeah, I just go wanna, ahead, Mike. I just want to follow up on that, Stephanie. Sorry. Um, so here's the reason I'm asking the question: is I'm looking at year one, and then I'm looking at out years, and you know we're obviously trying to wrestle with how to pay for out years. Do we have opportunities in year one versus the out years, or even in year two versus the next three years to say, okay, we can maybe split a project like we've talked about before, or maybe we can say you can do this. And, and uh, I know Troy probably thinks that I like picking on him. I don't. Um, but with the fleet expansion, we've talked about with the public works vehicle, like if one of the vehicles that's getting replaced has a decent amount of value, can we stipulate, here's your approval, but your, um, your, you must trade in the current vehicle. Like, can we create a stipulation like that that says this approval is based on that trade-in? So that trade-in would essentially reduce the cost of the new vehicle, which would allow us to push a little money into the next year. That's the kind of thing I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I touch on that? So Mike, if, um, I would say that would not be, you could say that, but the authority is not with this um, advisory commission, but the board of selectmen could certainly then say, we're gonna trade that in the money doesn't go to public works. I know there's a way to funnel those dollars back towards, unless it was a, a trade, if they sell in another manner, it would go to, um, into the general fund. If they were to trade it in, it would offset the cost, but sometimes you're better off selling it in another manner. And then right. Donna, correct me if I'm wrong, that money goes into the general fund. So it, it kind of <laughs> offsets the cost, but not, not really 
you know, we'd still be putting but, out dollars and there'd be money in the general fund. Uh, and then we could go through a process of allocating those dollars. And I think it would be through town meeting back um, to whatever department the expenditure came from. But why so would I think it's that? even simpler than that. I think it's even simpler than that. I think either it's a trade-in, as you said, which reduces the upfront cost of the thing you're buying, or if it's a sale afterwards, then you're right, the money comes back into the town coffers, but that's the same money we're looking to use to pay for things, right? So, so it goes into the town coffers that maybe that allows us, if we get a $35,000 trade-in, um, or if Willington One uh, buys the second ambulance to get them through until their new ambulance comes in, and then they decide running one ambulance works and they're gonna have a brand new ambulance so they can trade in the second ambulance and maybe that knocks $50,000 off of their new ambulance, or they can just sell it. Uh, that 50,000 goes back into either reducing the cost of the new ambulance, or it goes back into the general fund, in which case we have that $50,000 to help pay for things the next year. That's why I'm asking the question. Yeah, except we're not just, just to be clear and Donna, correct me if I'm wrong, we're not taking these dollars from the general fund. So in order to get back into the funds that we are utilizing here, there would have to be transfers made, right, Don? So if we if we didn't trade in and we sold the vehicle into the general fund, that's not affecting the cost here. That would only affect any dollars used to offset the overall budget, Mike. So but there, our I yellow, think right. goes to, goes but our yellow box number, our yellow box number is the money coming from the general fund to pay for capital. No, it's money coming from tax uh, out of, to pay for the budget. We don't pay for the budget with the general fund. That's Right, but we transfer money from the general fund into the budget every year. Not we have all well, the taxpayers. But, money. Right, right, but we don't always take from the general fund. The idea isn't to build up your general fund to offset your budget. So while we've done that, that may not happen every year, and there have been years where there hasn't been a lot of money. I'm just saying it could go directly back to some of the sources, and it's possible. It's it's there's just a multi-step process. I, I agree. I agree. But if you if you offload an asset that's worth fifty thousand dollars, that fifty thousand dollars comes back to the town in some fashion. It helps the budget. I mean, Christine, is the book the bookkeeping is such, or Donna, isn't the bookkeeping such that say if you did do that and you had it come through the general fund, it would still end up being you know um, uh, a a budget event that would that would be go to your reserve, wouldn't it? Or go to, I mean, it doesn't just stay in there. It doesn't just carry over to the next year. It's like reconfigured in some way. It's seen as it's seen as a um, you know something on the plus side that we weren't necessarily banking on, right? Right. So unless it, we were banking on it, but yeah. Right, but if we were banking on it, then it would it would go to whatever lines we have identified. If that's the, I mean, I guess the way I look at it is a capital expense, like buying a big vehicle, is not something that would necessarily go back to the department asking for it because it's capital. It's not, you know, it's it's not it's not operating. Mm -hmm. So why would it go back to to the budget? I, I don't understand that. So I, I don't I don't see that Donna, as can you answer that? the thing is harvesting the money, you know, <laughs> what Mike's talking about, making the costs lower at the front end so that we don't have this bracket creep on a five year plan that is clearly right. sustainable. It wouldn't make the cost lower on the front end because you cannot net that revenue and expense. You have to keep the expense separate, which is what the CIP does from the revenue. So yes, if you have excess revenue coming into the general fund, mm -hmm. that's going to just roll into the fund balance or the surplus. Right. But your expenditure just can't be netted with, a, with your trade-in money or your, well, if you sell it and you get money in. If you trade right. in, it can, can reduce the cost and then the expenditure is reduced. Right. Right. Yeah, we have done trade-ins in the past at times. Mm -hmm. And I think I know with the, this truck, Troy has talked about um, uh, hoping to trade that in. Correct, uh, Troy, I believe that is what we've heard from you. Yes, <clears throat> that would be traded in. 
And Mike, not to, uh, I got a thing. The, what do we have that's worth $50,000 to trade in? The trucks we keep for 20 years, what are they going to be worth? If you were to keep a truck for 10 years, then maybe the value of that truck would be worth trading in at a certain point. You know, when you do it. But then once again, it falls into not having a spare truck, not having this to minimize right. the fleet, like what you want. I mean, right. it, I can't trade in something that's, you know, the excavator, I'll go back to that. We have the JCB backhoe that we don't use anymore. It's got some severe hydraulic leaks. It's got some stuff that it's not worth fixing. But John Deere will buy that as a trade-in. They might give you ten thousand for it, and they have to fix it. So the, out of that eighty or seventy-nine thousand, ten thousand as a trade, so it comes off that price. I can get right. that price before, but there's nothing worth in that garage that you're going to trade in the maroon truck that's got three hundred thousand miles on. It's probably worth five hundred bucks. I mean, nobody's yeah, I understand that completely. I, the fifty thousand number was just a number I pulled out as an example, but you're exactly right. You're 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 that's exactly the point I'm making. What you said is, if the ten thousand dollars reduces the cost of that excavator, if the trade in reduces the cost of that excavator by ten thousand dollars on a seven year payback, that might save us only a thousand dollars each year, but still, that's money to pay for something else. Um, oh, yeah, I, I agree. You know, if we were to get a new payloader in five years, you know, that payload or six years right. when it's due, you know, we're not going to keep that. We would trade that right. in. So they might give you a 45,000 or 50, depending on what it is, I'm just saying. Right. Then that's worth doing. We're not going to need two sure. payloaders or two backhoes or two great. Right. Right. And you, you did say trade. some of those spare trucks you thought were worth 10,000 or more. And that's money that starts to help, you know. And I know I understand the reason, the methodology you want to have to fix. <laughs> I understand that completely, and I'm not trying to disrespect it. But when we're trying to find dollars, we may be in a position where we have to say, Troy, you've got an excellent plan. We understand your plan, but the only way we can afford this is if you trade in something. I'm not right. saying it's a decision. I'm just saying that's an example. You know, oh, if no, you, and I, and I, mean, I agree with you, Mike. You may have to do that. Right, and I agree with you. You know what I mean? Even, you know, we've expanded our fleet by one extra dump truck that's actually our full running spare. So that's good. You know what I mean? If we were to get another new truck, Maybe that newer truck, or say like Jeff's truck, you, you know, that it's going to be, say, replaced in 2024 or whatever, if the plan continues that way. And then the spare truck now would go away. That spare truck is still in decent shape. You might get 25000 for that truck. Right. Because it's and that's real money. That. That's exactly. I wouldn't say, hey, let's keep it, like, hold on to it. No, because we would take Jeff's truck and make that a spare because that truck. Yep. So we would trade that in. Okay. So the fleet's not going to grow any more than that. It's just going to grow as... We should always have a big spare dump truck just in case of whatever happens. We don't need to have five spare dump trucks. We should at least have one on a continuing cycle. That That's basically right. And, you know. and Mike, with this exact thing, there are some towns, and I believe Stafford is one of them, that will, because those dollars go right into the general fund, that revenue goes there, it, unless it was a trade-in. Um, and they will transfer those dollars so that they become usable to purchase equipment within the department that the the, the the sale came from. So a public works were to sell like a $5,000 dump truck, the money would go into the general fund and then through town meeting, you could move the money and appropriate the dollars back towards that department so then they could use to purchase other pieces of equipment. That, so that's up to you know the town, how we continue to do that. But for purposes of the dollars in this budget, none of that, unless it were a... Um, a trade-in and it were something off budget, we wouldn't see the impact of those dollars specifically for our um, charting. But, but you could also we argue- We would still get the money back into our, that's the whole point is we get the money back to the town, right. which it, affects taxation. It does, but, it, so for the, but for the purposes of our plan, it's not gonna alter what we're doing here because we just wouldn't be able to see, they're not dollars we're using. 930 is something that we would put into the budget. And and yes, Board of Finance has used some dollars, but not always. Right, but if we have money in the general fund, it affects what we're doing. <laughs> and we might even be able to say, hey, look, next year we can move up our capital expenditure higher by that 50 grand, because we know that 50 grand's coming in revenue, uh, in, in sort of like a revenue into the budget. That's the only reason I'm asking. And really my question is not what's the value of the trade in. My question is what is our process if we wanna to try to plan this way? Can we plan this way? 
And not for nothing, but if one department uh, is is buying a significant piece of equipment and there is a trade-in you know, involved or there is a, a sell after the fact that goes into the general fund, I, I'm thinking there are other departments who didn't even make the plan and have, have you know, wishes and dreams as well that would move them forward. What is wrong with, with spending whatever that money ends up being on, on the, clear, the clearest need for whatever? You know what I mean? I don't, I don't see that it's, because the department that's asking for it is getting a big new shiny piece of equipment or whatever, fill in the blank. And you know, if, it, if there, a good deal is made, and the, the question I was gonna ask several minutes ago was, one of the things that's in this, um, in this same, it fits in this discussion that I'm concerned about is uh, other years I've been on CIP, I felt like there was more of the kind of classic get three bids and, and describe the differences and ex, you know, pick one or whatever, or feel, you know, say we favor this for this reason. I don't, I don't feel like we're really doing that now. I feel like we're costing out something, you know, with, with one, uh, one source, one, one, one place that we would purchase from, and that's getting ground into the plan as a sort of sacrosanct figure. And I'm, and personally, I'm kind of questioning some of the figures and how solid they are. So Steph, I'll tell you, people are tired of giving us quotes for things. So we're not getting three quotes in this process. Because, well, I think we're, I just feel like we're, when, we're when we actually, when we make an actual purchase, the procurement policy says we have to have three quotes or um, a state approved uh, vendor, right? Contracted vendor, and that does happen. For purposes of this, we try to get what we can, mm -hmm. but we have had so many things that have been out here and then not done, and, and Phil has spoken to this too. We've had the same problem is that folks don't wanna go through the time to give us- No, this, I so understand we're not, that. So we're getting round, you're getting round figures here and, and you know, in the ballpark figure. And when the actual item or service is then purchased, that process is being followed. I'm just feeling like the round figures we're getting are rounded up quite a bit some, in some cases. That's what worries me. And then we put that in the plan and that, that gives us less wiggle room to, to, to address someone else's need. Well, if um, we gave you an exact figure, you're assuming that right now for some something we don't know is gonna end up in a plan, someone's gonna be able to give us three different costs that just, just that's not happening at this step for every project. So yes, they are giving you cost estimates. The, and we hope that we are close and we have been pretty close. We've been you know, under on projects that we've done in the last couple of years, but I'm not going out and looking for, you know, getting three quotes for everything that we're doing before it comes to this plan. Well, I don't think I was asking for that. I'm asking for, I'm, I'm kind of asking like, when you're setting specs and there's some kind of costing out happening, right? Yeah. You're going to someone. Are we, do we have any reasonable way yeah. of saying that vendor has done right by us before and we think that they will come with the most competitive price anyway? I'm just saying, who are we getting the figures from and how much, how big of a project, you know, how, how, do, how are the specs arrived at? Because I just feel like some of those things or weighing the you know the ship's listing um, to to a certain side, and um, I'm just I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one who has this concern. It just I've been on CIP for a while, and I just sort of feel like the figures are getting you know um, significantly bigger um, on the ask. So I'm I'm just the items are significantly more expensive i'm just you know well, i mean okay so. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to go around about it yeah i, I think it's i mean we, it's a we are working concern. we are working with uh, vendors to to get as best cost estimate we can mm -hmm. um we're certainly not gonna can't cannot commit to them um right when we go out in this process mm -hmm. and and so we do for the most part use rounded figures and and oftentimes in in this process you might see some contingencies because by the time it gets to that point there are added costs or in a construction like projects you want to add um, some contingency costs in there so there aren't exact figures so that they do look a little bit more rounded i understand that <clears throat> 
Hey, Christina, what are we doing? Well, so what I think we should do is we need to have all the everything balanced at least, and then you know the the actual numbers. Um, I I don't know. We, we we have a goal for each year of what our local spending will be, and if our off budget spending we can is is doable with what we have here, then then I think we've got a plan. But if, from what Donna was saying, we had a problem with the capital reserve fund in year three, so I don't I don't know that we fixed that problem. Have we, Donna? Because we, we just we just deleted out that seven fifty. That was not really. In your fund. Yeah. So I think I think what we need to do is add that 900 to the bond, like like Erica suggested in the in the second year. But I don't know if that's gonna if that would help. Oh, it's I gonna think it only the helps the reserve the fund, it doesn't help the bond payment. <laughs> right. Right. And I know that's hard. That's like a multi-step process for Donna to, to she's got to. Well, yes. Into, so let's, let's just, let's recap. So, so we have a 20 million, $21 million bond in year two, and that's the school and that's the school. What mm -hmm. line did that show up on? Um, so that's actually, okay. that's 18 million for the school. What's, what's the rest of it? Because I just, like, I, like we're piling I, up the bonds and we're not going to have a bond one year and then two years later, another bond and then two years later, right. another bond. So, we also said that the 18 million is probably low. So, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So, so Donna, I see in year two, I see the school. I see the Willington one fire station addition. And then I suggested putting the road in that bond. So I see two that have a bond anticipation note next to them. Okay, so then. And then if we took the 900, added it to that and did one bond, uh -huh. I think that talk, take, talks to your piling up bonds. Mm -hmm. Is it a larger payment? Yes, mm -hmm. which, one, which way is better in your- So is it a good idea <clears throat> to, to go to the taxpayers with three bonds, school, new you know school fire department and road well it'd probably all be in one i'll be in one, be in one. We, yes yeah. so right. i'm saying is it a good idea to put three in one and bring it to the taxpayers just you know what do you all think well, better you know <laughs> we're, we're moving forward with the school project whether it becomes a project will depend on voters but we can't keep, keep kicking these road projects down the road. We know they have to get done. So if we're gonna do a bond, I think it makes sense to put it in there. We have an obligation at some point to maintain our roads that we know have significant deficiencies. And I don't know how we pay for them in the plan. It doesn't work otherwise. But can I note that if a school project happens, there are multiple school projects in the reserve fund that are adding, taking away the costs that are affecting the reserve fund balance. So we have a bond and we have all the school projects at the same time. And that's where I struggle with this plan right now. And I think we had the same problem last year. Mm -hmm. Our plan in my mind is unrealistic because it has a school bond for either a newly renovated or a new school and all of the school projects in it. Erica, you're talking about what we split into the A and B five, the fifth year A and B last time, right? You're only going to do Correct. A B, not both. Correct. Right. <clears throat> and right now, that is, those projects are spread out over the next four years at the same time as a bond and a bond payment are in there. So the plan itself is we're not doing both. We know we can't do both, yet we're planning for both simultaneously. It's a little. Um, I have a question. So our job obviously is to um, identify things that are priorities um, on behalf of the town. And I think to a person, everybody on this committee has talked about the roads being a priority and 
everyone has certainly heard about all the school stuff that's happening. I'm just wondering about the fire station. Like, is that something that can be moved to a different year, even just for evaluative purposes, given that the school, whatever renovation or replacement is coming and um, the roads just have to get fixed? Donna, can you speak about the cost of implementing a bond? I believe it was in yes. the many tens of thousands of dollars to do yes. a bond. Yes, e to issue a bond easily, $50,000. So to Donna's point that she was making earlier, well, this is the point I took that you were making is, it might be challenging to have voters approve those three things together. Um, so if, you, if your vote, like if you certainly absolutely want a school and you absolutely want the roads to be fixed or you absolutely want the fire station and you could care less about the roads, whatever your your pleasure, it's a difficult choice if we're putting all of that into one thing. Um, and I'm that's just such a big chunk of money, $3 million, um, when we're trying to talk about the roads and as a as a safety issue, as a priority. I don't necessarily know that it's one or the other, but to me, given our financial constraints, it seems like that's a, a place where we could look. And, and Jen, I, what I got from Donna was the same thing. It's gonna be hard to get all three, but the cost, if we do three separate, even over you know a five-year period is not the most cost-effective way for us to do business. So we have to decide whether or not these are priorities we see in this five-year plan. I, I just don't know how, like, I don't know how we're gonna pay for it. Looking at the numbers on the spreadsheet, it's great, absolutely, that all these things are necessary, but like seeing negative numbers is, is pretty scary. Hmm. Christina? <laughs> what do you what do you think? Put, um, it, put it all on the put it all on the bond, and then there's another bond out here for school roofs, which doesn't make sense. I mean, it doesn't make sense that we're going to take another bond in two years to pay for the roofs. I mean, um, I I don't think it makes sense. But if you think it makes sense, well, I'm but, happy to go with it. So the roofs are not would. Are, would be included if we do renovate the school, one of the schools. But in the other school, the, the town would still probably have some responsibility for and still would need to do it, probably. Um, oh, without reimbursement? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I don't know. I mean, on some level, all of this is just... Um, it's just an estimate and but they're just enormous numbers now <laughs> so Christina, it's, yeah it's hard what, to Christina yeah what if we take all of these other school projects like we had done the a and b thing last year but not create an a and b column because that's um, that's complicated yeah we take all the things that would not be the renovated school mm-hmm um, and just code them differently for a, make up a fund source for the sake of this spreadsheet right now mm -hmm. so that Donna can categorize them differently and that would pull them out of the, the yellow box number, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And I would say that for a planning tool, we're expecting a school renovation project of some, mm -hmm. a school construction project, whether it's renovation or new. So yeah. we've number in for that we've kept the other projects in the plan because they would happen if we don't do the school right and, and but we have essentially made them off budget so at least then we can see what our red yellow box number is mm, i like that donna do you like that i like that so if donna wants to make up whatever code or fund source she thinks is the right place to basically park those um <laughs> then they're still in the plan and we can reactivate them at any time. Yeah, that's good. So you have them in the plan, but not 
a plan to pay for them, but they're there. Well, the plan- They're to pay essentially for them. an alternate. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The, well, the plan to pay for them I, would be if we don't <clears throat> move forward with something, with a solution for the schools, we'd be spending that money to repair, keep, repair the existing ones. So right. My right? suggestion was Which gonna be- what we've been doing. Right, my suggestion was gonna be similar to Mike's, but a different in execution is we decide, are we going to prepare a plan that has school projects or has a school um, a construction project? I think we can only have a plan that has one or the other because otherwise it's not a real plan. So we move them off to, we've made up a fund source that doesn't exist and we've moved them there and they still sit on the plan. I think our plan looks like one or the other and, and we hide them. The school construction plan, let's say it doesn't happen. They're in the plan, they're hidden in the plan and they're activated next year. We'd be putting them in the years that they were planning them for. But I think we either plan to do one or we plan to do the other. We can't plan to do both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, I think you're right. That's pretty close to, to what I'm saying. It's a matter yeah. of how we show it on the forms. And, and I think we just hide them so that that's more realistic than creating a, a dummy fund that um, to us makes sense as we work this plan, but to someone else looks like funny money. And well, I don't think, tonight, I know that's we, not our intent. <laughs> well, at least for tonight, so we can see the numbers, um, whatever's the easiest way for Donna to take them off budget. I think yeah. we're ready to present this to the board of selectmen. I think we can do it anyway. You know, we can say they're fun 99. I agree because it's a, you know, it's sort of like, there's, this isn't realistic. I mean, so they're kind of in the way of seeing what the, what the real picture will be. Um, it's good to have it all on here now because we're getting to a place where we recognize what the issues are all at once. But, you know, as far as a plan to pass, you know, we we definitely need to focus it. Yeah, I think I think it would help people understand if we just if we hide those things. I mean, I think in round figures it was about nine hundred thousand dollars in school projects, not counting the roofs. Um, wow. So in terms of you know laying the groundwork towards uh, either fixing up a school or. Uh, building a new one uh, versus spending, you know, one and a half million dollars or more fixing what you got and keep going with what you have. Um, I'd like to bring to your attention lines 67 and 68. Uh, 68 is the West Wing ventilation, which right for Hall School, which right now is a half million dollars under ARPA. And I wasn't sure that we, we wanted to contemplate spending $500,000 next, well, the year two out of your ARPA money uh, to do the West Wing ventilation. Um, the line before that is 105,000 in year three for ARPA. And I didn't know if the ARPA funds would even exist in year three. Well, well the thought there was if, if the project isn't going to happen, then that, that needs to happen. That's is is that right, Erica? Is that what the thinking was with that? Yeah. Uh, yes, I think so. And so the Stuart, to your point, we have till December thirty first, twenty twenty four, to commit the dollars until uh, the end of twenty twenty six to actually spend them. So yes, there could be money in twenty four twenty five. Um, it would have as long as it's committed and encumbered by twenty twenty four, and then the project. Um, <clears throat> has to be completed and spent by 2026. I think to Stuart's point though, I'm guessing, I think what Stuart's asking is, will what's the uh, prospect that there will be ARPA money available? Yeah. I would think ARPA would need to plan for that. Like, yeah. so as they build a big plan, um, they don't have to do that. I see Melissa's hand up. Oh, I can't uh, yes, Melissa. just um, as um, what Mike was saying, you know, like we're putting in the codes, you know, the funding source, ARPA, you know, for the ARPA, when we don't even know if ARPA is going to approve all of this, you know, so it's the same exact, you know, thing if right. we had just had, 
did what Mike suggested of, you know, just putting in not necessarily a dummy fund, but an alternative, you know, fund source so that we can see, you know, whether or not we're doing, you know, all these school projects or the school building, you know, or the new school or school renovation, just so that, you know, um, it's clear to see the total total numbers because I think most people that look at this form that haven't been in CIP get pretty confused and don't understand it. But I mean, mm -hmm. that way, you know, because we don't even know if ARPA is going to approve half of these things that we're saying is ARPA. Right. But if they don't, then those things probably aren't going to happen. <laughs> and that's, that's just, so it's still, yeah, it's like, what mm -hmm. ifs too. I mean, a lot of this, I know you're trying to plan for these five years, but it's kind of difficult to do that sometimes. Um, and I have seen in past years too, where, you know, it seems that certain things, you know, get changed here and there, funding sources change, grants become available, um, state money becomes available, federal money becomes available. And they've been able to change it. And, you know, Eric has gotten lots of, you know, ways to, you know, find um, find the money to make sure that stuff happens. Um, but, you know, I think just for purposes of being able to determine that final number, it might be good to have it, you know, versus listing it on separate documents, which makes it really difficult. Mm -hmm. so donna are you currently moving those school projects off budget is that what you're doing right now um, all right let's let's just do it mike because we're in year two and let's 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 just do it we get when we get to the schools it's um this light yellow and yeah. the first one we have in there is the classroom sinks and cabinets and plumbing twenty four thousand. Right. so what's you your to, pleasure well what is the easiest way for you when we're just debating this we don't need a final product so what is the easiest way for you to make this go off budget and be able to recreate it later like is it just is just change the 04 to a different number or will that not change the formula in the spreadsheet do you have to do more yes i yeah. i can manually change the formula it's okay if you want to just call it zero zero so it's we're not okay. funding. We're not funding it. There's no so funding for it. Okay. So let's that try that for now. now. Just put a zero yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Same thing with the um, the clocks and the PA and the security system. There's no funding for it. So yeah. Right, so it's one. you know no funding. It's not really in the plan because you don't have a way to pay for it. So boiler replacement, right. take it out, and take out the hall school clocks and security. Okay, that's the end of the school. So, so those numbers you still have to manually <clears throat> extract from that seven ninety, right? Um, eighty or whatever it is. Okay, so that's not gonna. It's off budget. Oh, yeah, it was off budget. yeah. It, it, was was all budget. Already it was all in capital reserve, so that number uh, yep. will go down. Yep, so right. the full number will go down. But yeah, she has to do that manually. So that 550 down below is probably more like two something now. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because so we that spend. Will, yeah, that'll still have a net positive effect on taxation. It just doesn't yes. help. Doesn't help our plan number. Right. <laughs> or we could put that money back into. Well, yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Cancel that. I mean, and my point is just, we need to have a plan that either has them or doesn't have them because no real plan, and this should be, it's a, a real plan. We're going to do one or the other. We're not going to do both. And we know we're never going to do both. So we need to show a plan to the taxpayers that says what we think. And at this point, we think there's a better, poss I think there's a better possibility of moving forward with a school project than the individual projects. If we move forward in the next year as we work CIP next year and there's no school project going to happen, 
we start building the plan with individual projects. And I think we've heard Phil say before, he's going to have a lot more than what we've had. These are just the ones that have come up over the last several years. So, you know, I think we do one, we either keep all the projects and get rid of a bond for a new school or we do the opposite. Yeah. Otherwise he, it's not a real plan. You're right. You're right, Eric, because he's been in a mode where we're just doing the have to stuff and we're, right. you know, we're not doing anything aggressive as far as um, repairs or renovation now um, on the schools. We're just kind of marking time, as they yeah. say. Erica, I agree with you for, for the final product. My only point is, as we work through each of these years, we don't want to just eliminate everything and take it off the screen and not have it. it just, it's just a working document right now for us. But I agree the final plan needs to send a direction. Right. But yeah. I'm not sure it's easy enough, as, as we think for Donna, while we're in a working plan, Mike, to just do that, because there's a lot of manipulation of the numbers. So Donna, is it easier to hide them as we move now? And, and is, will that make your formulas work a little bit easier? What, I, I think what Mike wants to see the bottom line, but us changing the funding source isn't helping that. If she hides them, the, 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 the formulas will still work if she hides them. That's so it'll right. actually make it harder for us to see. Cause yeah, yeah, Christine is right. Let, let me just, you know, pull them out of the formula quickly. Six. And you'll see the reserve fund uh, will, will grow. So the rest of us just go get a beer. Yeah. <laughs> Give Donna a couple minutes. <laughs> so, so Schofield Road drainage is still coming out of capital reserve in year two. If we did want to throw these, you know, these two road projects onto the bond, uh -huh. you could, we could, we could gain three sixty by doing that. But we're adding to the bond. What do you guys think? So if we reduce a lot of capital reserve that we can, we can bring that back around eventually to help us out, right? Right, right, right. Wait, is that the same as the school bond? Um, well, or his own bond? If we bond them together. If we bond them together. Like right now, they're just in there as their own lines so we can like see what's going into this bond. Mm -hmm. And if we wanted to, we can move them out. But like um, Donna's saying, it's gonna be $50,000 each year to do a different bond. So, but when the time comes and you know, the, the rubber hits the road, maybe we don't, maybe we're not ready to do one of these projects yet. Or maybe we, um you know are ready to go with one but not the other so in that case that decision has to be made but but for now you know with these general numbers which i don't think it i don't think we have to like worry too much about the fifty thousand dollars <laughs> um you yeah. in the in the scheme of things but I just wasn't sure what you were recommending or what you were asking, Christina. About. Um, I, well, I'm thinking that the Schofield Road project should should be added as a bond project, and there and then free up the reserve, three hundred sixty thousand in reserve, which will help in the next year when we are slammed with the first bond payment. Mm -hmm. So um, Stuart or uh, Christina, I don't want to ask Donna this right now because she's doing her magic, but um, does, 
is fund 17 capable of carrying the costs for the fire station project does is that relieved from needing to be in the bond well it might still be in the bond but can fund 17 carry that or is that too much for fund 17 the 2.9 million yeah no well if it was in a bond payment if it was a portion of the bond um, uh probably I mean, it might be, uh, I, I don't know, well, we'll take it. We'll, $100,000 maybe. What's the annual payment for the library right now, roughly speaking? Uh, we're That'd down to 177. Um, you could probably do it, but you wouldn't be able to buy much of any equipment or trucks. Yeah, it would, it would tap, it would pretty much tap it out. Yeah. Okay. That, that was just a, okay. It's, it's one pocket or the other kind of thing um, right? <clears throat> that you could do it, but some of these other things we're applying towards Fund 17 um, right. wouldn't, would have to find another funding source for that. So then it would just change it back into the yellow box number again. Mm -hmm. uh, doing the bond for the Liska and Schofield may have helped you with your negative reserve number that we had going on, I hope. Yeah, yes. That plus all of those school projects were in reserve. So, right. mm -hmm. Stephanie, to your comment before, um, since we're still in session, uh, I went and got a Fresca. <laughs> <laughs> You're so wholesome. <laughs> I just took the opportunity to use the facility. <laughs> I didn't think about getting something to drink. <laughs> so the really scary thing is year three, that first um, bond payment. Where is it? It's um yeah right there the two the two million two million yeah that is so we go from making a seven hundred and eighty thousand dollar commitment to a two point three probably by the time it's over um, but that's um, not the that's not the annual bond payment is it yeah or or are you including the school with that um the schools in that yeah. the schools in that okay. yeah. And, and all the leases are in that too, um, all the local funds. But not for nothing, why is that placeholder 18 million? Um, that's what, that was the least amount that we were told it could be based on Phil's estimates. For either, you know, for if it's a new school, it, it might be more. Or it could be more, even if it's, it is a, a renovation of one of the yeah, I thought the renovation back when they did the engineering, you know, survey on some, whatever it was, like eight options, renovation, to, renovation to new was the the, um, the the most expensive option. Mm -hmm. Of the renovations, the most expensive was to just do CIP projects. Um, uh, and, and Steph, those numbers are so old, so it's so hard to tell. What was that 2017? Somewhere, right, and they had some updated in 2019. So we have some older and right. some newer. None of them were post-pandemic. Yeah, we did ask updated <laughs> in 2019, because that's when the school board actually picked one of the options. And Yeah, and if I recall, you, you were on the board then, Steph, you all asked for um, a cost estimate with an auditorium that would be paid for knowing that it wasn't reimbursable. Right. Yeah. So the 18 is, we know, we, we think it's a, a low, a low end number. Yeah. <coughs> and then the 3 million for the firehouse that's probably a high, I, I would hope, a high-end number. 
on the roads? I don't know. Keep in mind that firehouse number estimate was from probably five years ago. Mm -hmm. And that 360 for Schofield Road is really um, old. 20 years ago. <laughs> so who knows where, what that really is? Yeah. It's probably more like five to 10 years. I think Carl did it in the last 10 years, but. So, so how do we go about fixing that problem of not having realistic numbers? Because it's already bad with the not realistic numbers. So if the numbers keep creeping up, it just makes it worse, not better. So for right. the roads, they need um, engineering done. And so once we do that, we'll get a more solid. So once we move in a forward direction, it's not um, as easy as if we were getting a quote for a dump truck to get those numbers. And then for the school project, once there's a project identified, it'll narrow down. The cost will become much more clear until now. There's really no way without paying for <clears throat> more numbers to, to get a more accurate number. So shouldn't that just be the thing that's on <clears throat> CIP is just forgive my innocence if it already is on here somewhere, but for the engineering cost? It is in there. Okay. Yeah. So that almost speaks to doing the same thing with the road projects that we're doing with the school projects. We, we shouldn't have the numbers for the road projects until we actually know what the numbers are, at least some realistic number. Yeah, but then if we don't put anything in as a placeholder, then it's not getting planned for at all. So that's that, that's our best guess at this time based on the information given to us. So we can't put in zero that kind of defeats the purpose of the plan. We got to put in something and based on the town engineer, uh, those were the rough figures he gave us. So could you could someone just direct my attention to where the engineering like what year is that in? It's in the first year one. So for scope. For this Liska Road, it's the six thousand dollars in year one. Okay. And um, Schofield Road, Schofield Road is thirty-five thousand dollars. Oh yeah, right yeah. there, right underneath it in year one. And we're going to use low SIP funds for that. The other place where we're taking a big. Uh, um, the capital reserve is taking a hit is the public works dump truck in year one. But the only option there would be to lease it, which, you know, we talked about how it'd be better to buy it knowing that we have this big thing coming in a few years, this, this other big payment, and to, to lower the lease load in those out years. But then there's a whole other, the second public works truck in the next year that we're leasing. You know, to let, let's say that we complete this plan, we vote on it as it sits, we have all of the dump truck coming out of the reserve fund. And then before we actually order something and move forward with it, ARPA, Melissa had asked the question about could some of those things, and I think we we're talking about some of those public works, could some of it be used with ARPA funds instead of the whole hit out of ARPA and the whole hit out of gear split? Then yeah. we would have just spent less um, money this year um, out of the reserve fund and have it available in future years if we didn't spend $225,000. So we didn't increase our debt to affect next year and we could potentially make more money. And there's a little bit more time for ARPA to have a discussion about that, but we plan for how to pay for it in full out of this plan. Mm -hmm. So there could be a brighter spot to the plan when we regroup again next yeah. year. Um, so I don't know if that's the direction we go, but it's a possibility. But is it right that, that we want, that, Troy, is it right that you want one truck this year and another truck next year? Or wasn't there supposed to be at least two years in between? Yeah, <clears throat> there's one truck this year that would be replacing, and then it would be the following year, not next year, it'd be the following year after. That. Okay, so then, so then that's in there wrong. We can move that out. 
Okay. Troy Weyer. His, his Troy Weyer on. Is in there. Um, the, uh, this is the same class of truck as the one we bought last year, which was like 175,000. Have they gone up 50 grand already? What truck did you buy last year? But the white truck came two years ago. Two years ago. And that, okay, was so, an, that was an economy model truck, smaller motor. That was like buying like an XL pickup versus buying an XLT. So that's okay. why it came with a smaller rear, um, a smaller rear end, like transmission wise, a smaller motor wise, stuff like that. It didn't have the system what like loose truck has. So loose truck has a different suspension, different motor, different uh, transmission. Um, what else? The interior is totally different. Like everything's different basically. So I, I already know how you're going to answer this, but I think it's my job to ask, are these needs or wants? I is think that, with the bigger, the, the bigger motor and the, tra the, um, the transmission, yeah, for what they do and uh, the suspension, yeah, you, I, it's, not a, it's a need, it's not a want. And then the, the horsepower is a need, not a want. The more so, horsepower you have is the better you are. So if we're trading trucks, if we're doing 10 year replacement cycles, which I think is a prudent planning thing, um, do we really need the fancier truck if we're going to get rid of them every 10 years? Do you think? I mean, it's not really a, it's not really fancier. It, it's more, uh, it's got a bigger motor in it for more horsepower right. when you're pushing the hills. The transmission it's a heavier is, spec. It's a heavier, it's a heavier spec. spec. Exactly. Yes, that's that's all. I mean, it's not like he's got a you know a TV in there and Red doesn't have it. No, I understand like, that. I understand when, that. They, and when we bought that one, Troy, we bought what they had on the lot, right? We because we needed a truck. We yes. um, needed. We yeah. had our found ourselves without a contractor and needed a route. And Mike, we didn't order what we would normally order. We took what they had. I yep, I understand I, that. All I, yeah, I think I'm that added to, to the say, lower cost. I, I think, you know, I think it's the right question to ask is when we're really crunching dollars here, what are the things we can do with or do without? And I understand what you're saying is you feel they're necessary. So yeah. that's, I mean, that's the question. This one too, Mike, we put a stainless steel body on. So, you know, yeah. you might go to a 12 year. I, I just use 10 year as, you know, a, a starting point. You might find okay. that you can go to 12 years or 14 years, you know, and it all depends on, it, the maintenance portion of it too. If they're correctly maintained, as long as I'm there, they're correctly maintained, you, you know, and serviced and this and that, they might go 12, 14 years. You know, I'm not, they might go 15. Yep. So the heavier That's, spec truck will also influence it lasting. Influence, years. yeah. I just said okay. a 10 year number as a rough part. I mean, if you wanted to stretch them out to 12 years, by all means, you can do that as long as they're taken care of in the correct way, you know. The transmission right. supposed to be, you know, the fluid supposed to be changed at 50,000 miles. We do that. We, you know, if we follow what the specs are of the trucks and what their service requirements are, those trucks should last longer than mm -hmm. 10 years. Okay. I would have no, I would have no problem saying we'll put them on a 12 year cycle. You know, that that's as long as they're properly maintained, that's, you know, I, I'd go, I would have no problem doing it. Okay, thank you. So if we reduce the amount that we're spending of local funds in the second year, we can increase the amount going into capital reserve that year by like $50,000. I, I forgot what the, the goal was for year two for spending, but it's something like 780. Yeah, 780. So um, so you can add like 45,000 to that. Okay, okay, good. Capital so reserve? You're two. Yep, 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 yep. 780. Yep, I could add about $36,000. Okay. So you mean grab a project and put it in there or what? in that total or? So I put the money into the savings account. So it's gonna be a fund transfer from general fund to reserve fund. Mm
that looks good, Christina. Mm -hmm. That was good. Okay. So how does capital reserve look the, all the, is it now properly funded to at least handle everything the rest of the years? Yes. Okay. Looks good. I'm gonna proof the numbers one more time. Yeah. Spend some time proofing everything and just making sure everything's in balance. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, go ahead, Erica. Did we move just the year two or did you move all the years school project or you just worked on year two? Oh, I just worked on year two. Okay. I just, that's what I thought I just was wanted to kind of recap. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. So, so what's your pleasure? Take off the, um, this is gym air conditioning. <laughs> Take it off. Okay. Yep. And then, uh, take off the exhaust fans. I, I mean, my opinion, and this is just mine, I'm curious to see what everyone else thinks. If we leave the bond in and the payments for the bond in our plan, then we can't have yeah. these in our plan all the yeah. way across. Wait, what? I agree. We're doing right. one or the other, either the projects across four years or the bond That's and cool. it affects off across four years. Right. Okay, here is where we'll, we will see some savings. And um, I, I'm just going to have to somehow manipulate this. So maybe I'll track it separately just to take it off of here because if we're not going to plan for local funds for these projects because we're, we have the bond payment. So um, I'll rework that somehow. It's going to be a little bit of a project. Donna, what if you put in the um, over in the colored boxes, like in your yep. yellow colored boxes there, what if you put next to it, similar to how we've done with other projects where we've moved them or removed them or funded them? What if you put a line somewhere in there <gasps> in the project title thing that just says um, something like yeah. defunded or something like that? So that way people yeah. can see what we did with that project. But even next to the project title, right? Yeah, maybe so in the you, yeah. instead of yeah. move to twenty three twenty four, yeah, yeah. we we write, you know. I know yeah. defunded is a, is a dicey on, word. But, I don't, yeah. What'd you say, Mike? What's I know defunded can be a dicey word in some circles, but some some sort right. of a term there to indicate that we've um, removed the funding or not. Yeah. Whatever. I I like that. We could <laughs> say something like, you know, just put the amount and was, you know, was forty five thousand just to have a record of it, you know, something like that, 45K. Well, it's, yeah, it's still know, in your five-year cost column anyway. Or, or if you want to take it right out of oh, there. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, and then I'll just put maybe year, whatever this was, I think in um, 23, 24, maybe 24, 25. I'm, I'm going to have to kind of study this, but, I, but I, I'll keep a record of it this way. How is that? And then if we need to put it back in, It'd be an easy thing to do. There you go. There you go. Okay. It's a good plan. Yeah. And when, you know, it, let's say we finish the plan and it doesn't include, and we've moved it all out. Donna's got the finished product. When that goes to voters, there's going to be description written in there. And, you know, part of what this committee will, will have in that plan describes how we plan for A, um, recognizing that the, the school projects, you know, would have to happen and be readjust, the plan would have to be readjusted if a school project doesn't move forward. 
Correct. And we can right. put that in, right. in le written language instead of on the, on the document. Letter. Yeah. Yes. yes. <clears throat> yep, we, we can put it in the narrative. Because that I, this way, I just feel like it looks like an actual plan. We've actually planned for something. I struggled yes. all year last year, and I know Donna and I talked about this, about how having an A and a B wasn't really a plan if, if we have one plan. Otherwise, we could have five different plans of how we move things around. Mm -hmm. So we have to say to the, uh, to the residents, when we take this to town meeting eventually, when it gets, you know, whatever the plan looks like when it gets there, that we came up with a plan. And this is the plan that we see moving forward and are asking you to support. And last year it didn't, we didn't really hold to it. I mean, you know, it didn't, I think probably because of, you know, partly because, well, a lot because of COVID, but also I don't think we felt like it wasn't pinned down in the way other CIP plans have been as far as a real plan. Uh, you know, and we held to year four, but those out years, as long as stuff, you're right, like we're, we're just, we're up in the air as long as we have. <laughs> the components of one school redo and the components of another school redo just puts the whole thing out of whack. <laughs> Erica? Yes, Mike. Um, not to go off topic, but I've gotten two really odd emails now from Margaret DePilka and, and Stuart Fisher. It almost seems like there's something wrong with the email system or share okay. something. They're, okay. they're, they're going out to like 50 people at a time. All right. My can personal you, can, email, not my town email. Okay. Um, don't respond to them. <laughs> and then can you, can you like screenshot it and yep. share it with me? I'll, I'll text it to your work cell phone. Thank you. Because Stuart doesn't it have, too, Mike. you're receiving it too, Donna? Yes. Yes, I did. And I, I received an email today from Mike McCoo asking for a wire transfer for commission <laughs> expenditures. <laughs> well, that's one way to fix the CIP plan. Wow. You weren't supposed to talk about that in a public meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be how reporting those to IT immediately. <laughs> Donna, how much did I ask for? I was supposed to respond to you and let oh. you know uh, when I could do it and you would give me the details. Oh, 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 okay. I'm sure it was on behalf of the Board of Finance. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. Mike, can the fire department get in on that with you? That yeah, let's let's sign everybody up while we're at it. Oh Troy, what God. are you looking for, Troy? No, I, I'm getting those same emails, Mike, too. So I just got them on yes. my phone. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So okay. that's, something's yep. going wonky. Yeah. Yep. So uh I'm gonna I'm gonna look and see if I got one. Kelsey got one as well. Um, I'll report those to IT. Just don't respond and obviously don't click on any links in there. All right, so you don't need me to screenshot it now, right? I do not need you to. I have okay. Kelsey's and chances are I might be in that same group. It's interesting because it's coming from someone who does not have a town email. Yeah, Is there's... It, what's so in the about that. field? Should we all check? Um, so if you ever get anything that you think is suspicious, the first thing you should do is not click the link. We'd rather you ask us. Um, and then we reported to IT. So, um, yeah, we can talk about this outside of this meeting, but yeah, um, <laughs> th th some, went, some went that looked like they were from me um, in the fall and it looked like I asked for Apple gift cards and some folks click. <laughs> I would never ask you to pay me an Apple gift card. <laughs> oh my I'm gonna, God. I'm going to send you one now just because you said that. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> oh. So, okay, so where are we? We are. I, I'm going to go through all the out years and take off all of the school projects. Yeah. She was hoping you'd say, not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have a good direction from you, so I'm good if you want to. If well, you're finished with your business. So, so let's see, when is our next meeting? Is Do we have a next meeting? Yes, I have next Wednesday, next the 16th. Wednesday. Okay, well, so it sounds like if you do all this tweaking, 
on the 16th when we come back we're, we're gonna have like a much smaller looking spreadsheet and the numbers we're all gonna balance it's just will we like the numbers is the question at that point right isn't it the 15th it's the 15th the tuesday yep next the next meeting is on tuesday yeah so donna realizing that you are a busy person and cip is one of only many projects um is it possible to get it out to the committee a day or two before the meeting just so we can know it a little bit better it might make us more efficient in the meeting I really can't say because I have a huge okay. report due on the 15th. I'm okay. like so doubled up on due dates. Okay. It was, I figured it was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm sorry, Mike, what was, what was the question? Because I was looking at the email issue. I was just asking if it would be possible to get the, her modify her updated form before the meeting so we could. <laughs> um, and so you heard the answer. Donna, is this the time where I remind everyone, remember in the old days when you arrived at the meeting and there was a sheet sitting on the table waiting for you? Yeah. Imagine that's what it's going to be. It's just going to be your email instead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I and I understand that completely. It's just a little harder to work with it on screen than if you had the printout. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. It's really impossible to use it on that on screen. It is. It is. I mean, it's it's already small, even full size. So, but um, Donna, did you hear though that we're, the next meeting is on Tuesday instead of Wednesday? Thank you for correcting me. Well, the I only reason it. is because you said you had another big deadline on that Tuesday. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I see it now. I see it. Thanks. I'm going to correct my calendar. That so Tuesday's like not going to be a great day, huh? No. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. So does anyone else have any suggestions or questions or? Christine, is our hope that uh, at the next meeting, we might be able to approve the whole plan? Yeah, I think okay. so. I think that's the hope. I would hope so. Okay. Uh, that makes me hopeful because the selectmen have a budget meeting the next evening. Um, on, the, on the Wednesday? On the, on the Wednesday, on the 16th. Mm -hmm. And then um, our goal is to hopefully approve a budget on the 21st so that we could get something um, in that week's ahead time frame to the Board of Finance. If not, um, they just may not get it early enough, but that's our hope. So CIP is done. It, it really can help make for a perfect. Is SBC form. also meeting on the 16th, Eric? It is. It is. Okay. Our meeting is earlier. Our budget okay. meeting is at 530. SBC is at 630. <clears throat> So rest assured, the board of selectmen meeting will only be an hour. <laughs> it, it may be it may be at five. Um, okay. Well, I guess the uh, one of the things I I'm wondering just for I don't know where it fits in or if it fits in, is there some way we can sort of see with all we're doing now and talking about bonds and stuff, road bond, and school bond, do we? Uh, can we see what impact that has um, at some point? You know, I mean, as far as how doable it is for all concerned, or well, so what? So what? What Donna will do is, you know, she put the bond anticipation note, and she add that is adding to the total now. But now, in the years after that those bond payments will get added in so we'll, okay so that'll show that we'll, we'll just have a better wild estimate um <laughs> for the for the total but yeah and uh and we should be able to to do it in a way where you can see it for each each of the the items too so you know like okay the road is contributing to twenty five thousand of it every year Firehouse is contributing to a hundred thousand of it every year. I'm just making that up. I don't know what it is. Yeah. But um and then we'll see. <sighs> well, so in the out years, I mean, even if it's in the out years, if we feel it's unsustainable for the taxpayers do we leave it in and kind of do a 
a Scarlett O'Hara and think about it tomorrow? Or do we actually talk about, you um, know, yeah, how I to mean, muscle it down or what? I, I mean, I'm just trying mm -hmm. to think what the takeaway is for um, the citizens. Yeah, I think, um, you know, our options are to move things, in, you know, out a year or two or take them off completely but they'll just come back. Um, pretty much every project on here, I think will always come back. <laughs> right, and they're not the big drivers. The big driver no. major projects that kind of need to happen. So right. yeah. that's what we really have to wrestle with. Right. Yeah, and we, you know, can, can projects be, can we look at cheaper options of different projects? Maybe, but we're not, we can't really do that in the CIP plan. I mean, we can put in lower numbers, but until you actually get the plans and the construction docket and all that stuff, then you can't really know. Right. Yeah, we um, have actually done that before, Christina. Like when we said to the seniors, when they asked for money for a bus, we said, we, we just don't think it's supportable to get you a new van but we looked online and we found plenty of used vans for I don't remember what the number was 15,000 or 20,000 whatever it was yep. so we said we can give you $15,000 or whatever the number was um, because it just wasn't sustainable otherwise yeah and I see you know the big drivers that we're talking about here um, the roads the Willington one addition and then eventually because there's been design a cost asked for for Willington Hill. I don't see the roads as us ever at any point, even when we kick them down the road, which I don't advocate for, we're never going to say we can't do those, right? So those are things we're going to say we have to at some point address. The only things I see as us ever being able to say we can't fund that and we're not going to do that are the fire department facilities. Not that I'm saying we want to, but those are the only of those big drivers that I even see us being able to say, yeah, we can't do that. Um, and then at some point when the buildings fail, we have to say either you're responsible on your own or the town picks up the tab, so. I mean, there are two school projects going through, um, not necessarily in comparable towns. I guess the closest would be Ellington, the Windermere School. And that is a bill, that's a renovate to new um, for 61 grand. Um, the state's paying, I mean, 61 million. And I think the state's paying 55% or something. They're paying 32 million off that. Um, and then the other one is Pleasant Valley um, in South Windsor. And that is, I don't think that's renovate to new. I think that's a buildup or something like that. It also gets some state reimbursement, but that one's 58. That one passed. And um, I don't think the one in Ellington's gone to the voters yet, but the other one, the voters in South Windsor passed theirs. Um, that's a bit you, much bigger town, but they have more, they have more than one grade school. Do so, you know how old that building is? I'm curious. Oh, a lot younger than ours. Is that what you're wondering? I, um, I am because that's what I, that's the oh, pattern yeah. that I've seen. So I wonder if it was the same thing there. We, we don't find many that are, just starting to discuss it after a hundred years. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I don't think anyone's, I don't really think anyone's in our category. <laughs> I don't know. Where's I, you, that, if you find it, I'd like to see it. Cause me I'm, too. I, we, that's why I asked like anybody else out there <laughs> doing the same thing <clears throat> we are. So it says, you know, while it's a struggle and it's going to be a, a hard um, cost to swallow for folks. The longer we don't do something, the more uh, expensive it gets and the harder it gets because right. these buildings just aren't meant to last that long. Uh, Windermere was built in 1966. That's the one they want to renovate to new. Wow. Just a so baby. 50, 50 years. Just a baby. Yeah. <laughs> just I a know, baby. Baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> Talk about wants versus needs. That sounds like a want. <laughs> <laughs> Really well, Ellington's got <clears throat> uh, sixteen thousand people. That's why I said thousand. They've got yeah. sixteen thousand. We we of course we went down in our last census from six thousand to fifty five hundred, and and a different economic base too. Mm -hmm.
and into the different cells. Yep. All right, I'll get back to the email for a second while we decide. I sent that off to our IT help desk. So if you know anybody who reaches out to you that got one, we can't even send to just our town staff to say, this is a phishing email, don't do anything because we're having trouble sending it to everyone, so. Oh, deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not snow, it's technology. <laughs> <laughs> I can't deploy public that. works to make this one better. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for hanging in here. Um, yeah. Hopefully, it's more clear to us next week. But I think we're we're it's starting to make more sense. Yeah. We just don't like the number. It's a it's a much bigger task than it has been in other eras. Yeah. Yeah. Part, partly because we're actually making it making a plan. <laughs> like you know yeah. yeah right like we're getting serious <laughs> yeah yeah because it's coming like that's what i keep saying this the train is coming we, we, we can't avoid it <laughs> any longer we can't keep saying it's in year five because it's not not just watch out for the facebook warriors once they see this they're going to say oh you've already made up your mind no. what's going to be funded yeah mm -hmm. yeah but something something has to get funded. So I mean, even if even if we left all those other projects in that Phil had in, if nothing happens, if we keep both schools, what's the cost to that? There that's a whole other cost. So right. and we put some of those off for a couple of years. So some of them might need to be done much sooner rather than later. And so yeah. to those keyboard warriors, Stuart, I say, you know, we're not planning new versus a uh, renovated in one of our facilities, but we have to plan for something. And since that, that train is picked up steam and moving in a direction until we know that the town isn't going in a forward direction with that, that then we'll stop and go back to where we were at. But until mm -hmm. then, we're just trying to plan for one or the other. Yep. Duct tape. That's where we were at, right? <laughs> yep. Justina, what's yep. left on our agenda? I think just to um, adjourn. Move to adjourn. Don't then. move. Second. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, right. everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. See you on Thank Tuesday. you, Donna. Yes. Tuesday. See you on Tuesday. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.